Good morning, everybody. Welcome to this segment of AKT Celebrity Reads. I'm your host, Alexis K. Tyler. Um, I've, I've been up real early this morning. Um, God, I haven't been feeling that great. I think, too, it upset me so much when I saw the message Nipsey had me to give to his father that with Eskadam and Black Sam. It made me feel really bad. It made me feel uh, really down that that family has had so much tragedy, death and destruction, so much jealousy, so much subterfuge, so many hidden enemies right in their face, smiling in their face and stabbing them in the back at the same time. And um, I know that feeling. And I'm just, uh, I'm trying to be helpful. And I hope that what I say helps someone um, to get the information they need to know. Because most of the time, hindsight is twenty twenty. And many people will get impressions and feelings. They just may not have anybody around them to confirm it or they don't trust themselves. So they will brush it off and let it go. Um, I spent my life doing that by having people always want to put me down and discredit my ability to see, to hear, to know higher information without physical revelation first. Physical materialization of the proof of what I say. But the first reality, the first creation is always spiritual and the soul, the mind, the heart inside of the body, that inter- inner knowing, and it will materialize in the second life, the second awakening, the second creation, which is the flesh. You think the flesh reality is the first reality and the only one that's most important and it's real. No, you're living in a dream. You're living in a fantasy. The flesh body cannot come first. It doesn't even make any sense. When your mother is pregnant with you and you do not exist physically in this realm, but yet you do exist, in order for you to be seen, moved, felt, and heard in the physical, for it to be real or for people to consider it real, You have to be in a physical body. You have to be born. People believe what they can see, what they can touch and taste, and that is not the first reality. That is the illusion. Uh But to be able to see in the ethos, see in the astral, see in space, that is the first creation because that come from mind, and mind is embodied and encased in the physical realm. So for something to be manifested, materialized, and carried out in the physical, it first has to be conceived by the mind, plotted out, deduced, reasoned, or re-reasoned, erased, and then plotted out and thought out again to get what you think is the perfect solution, the perfect execution of the plan, and then walk it out, talk it out, carry it out in the physical To be physical, you must first be spiritual. You must first be mental. Y'all don't hear me. Uh. So I was briefly looking at this again. Okay, Grand Rise and Queen of Saint, because we're in church. We're in Vagina Power Church. We're in spiritual sexual church. Because everything begins with spirituality and sexuality. And sexuality... The way I teach it on vagina power, penis power, sperm power is not physical sex first. It's all in the soul of the individual. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to get into this. I'm not going to stay here too long. And I'll continue to come with pieces as I get it. Uh, Because I'm very tired right now. I just finished looking at this reading a little bit more on uh, Nipsey Hussle, Armius Joseph Ashkadam's father, Dawit Ashkadam. You know, 
I see some quite interesting things here that I didn't think would be here. When I looked in this man's guts, there's a lot of energy, a lot of history, pain, trauma, love, hate, war in this man's gut. He's a very strong and very proud man, very powerful man, Dawit, Ashkedom. Very beautiful, multi-layered type of enigma type of man, type of being. You may think you know or see him, but there are so many parts of him that are unexplored or that he refuses to show. Just like a set of Russian dolls, a doll within a doll within a doll within a doll. And for some reason, Russia, China, the U.S., Hitler and Mussolini come up in Dawit's reading in his guts. You know, life and death begin in the bowel. All of your pain, all of your conflicts, all your inner hurts, rages, anger, history will lie in the intestine. So if you want to heal your life and your body and a lot of emotional trauma and rape and abuse and abandonment, you want to start working on the intestine because the intestine is one of the main, the biggest sources of your immune system. It is the second heart. It will tell you right or wrong. I have a gut feeling that this bitch ain't no motherfucking good. And see, your guts will never lie to you. You lie to yourself. And you lie when you refuse to listen to your gut intuition, which is your God mind and one of the second sources of your heart and one of the biggest parts of your intuition and the biggest part of your immune system. That's why you want to keep your gut flora and your gut bacteria balanced because that will make you or break you. Even the health of your mouth and teeth determine on the health and the activity of the right bacteria and the level of probiotic balance in your intestine. Because they will never lie to you. You have a heart in your chest, you have a heart in your gut. And it will never lead you wrong unless you're too stupid to listen to it. Like I was told not to listen to it, I was crazy. Kiki, key, key, key. she's crazy. Listen to the stuff she's saying. She don't know what she's talking about. She need to go get some mental help. Ta ta ta. Yeah, I know her. She been a mental institute, bitch. I ain't never been no mental institute, bitch. And I ain't never been recommended or referred uh, to to a goddamn mental institute. And I ain't never been on psych meds. Speaking of that, didn't I tell you, Nipsey told me these shooters that were going to come out and start doing mass shootings were going to be military, ex-military. Veterans with psych problems on psych meds or needing to take the meds. I just shared a screenshot I just took. Do you realize the Texas shooter is a veteran? <laughs> ah, you know, it's okay. You don't have to thank me now. Mm -hmm. Queen Drip King Nip, hit my catch up, make it clap. God damn it. Yeah, you know, the crazy one. Yep, yeah, my catch up is. Queen Drip King, make it clap, bitch. Donate if you want to continue to me bring you information. Yeah, um, and guess what? He was discharged, probably dishonorably, because he had what? They suspect him to have a mental problem. <laughs> needing, having mental problems, needing psych meds? Huh? Didn't I say this to you? Didn't I tell you Nipsey told me to tell you, to warn you, as well as about the airplane, buses, and trains, and cruise ships, and the shooters coming? Shoot not with the police. Shoot not with civilians all of a sudden coming up out of nowhere, shooting people out in public. Didn't I tell you? Hmm? Thank you, baby, for posting my cash up. I remember, I've said it several times, we just had two new ones to confirm. Drip, the Atlanta shooter, 
as a dishonorably discharged veteran with mental problems, emotional problems, and on psych meds. Didn't I just say that? But you know, I, YouTube suspended me because they said I'm a liar with this medical misinformation shit. I make up shit. Huh? You all, I want to thank you. Because I've been called crazy all of my life. Even when I was a baby and didn't know what that meant. You have to understand your own mother. And all these people will see gifts in you that they don't have. Even when you're born, they can look in your eyes and see who you are and know who you're not. And they will cause you to stumble through life. Narcissistic mothers, narcissistic fathers, narcissistic family members, lovers, and friends. And they will tell you because they can't see it and they don't know it. And they're mad that you're born with the lucky charms. With the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow and they will turn it into a pot of shit and destruction if they can before you wake up and realize who you are they will constantly tell you who you are not because they're afraid if you become who you are you become bigger than them and you will outshine them but it's because of you this new generation of indigo children and the new generation that want the truth and are very open now and the way of the veil is peeled off of your eyes. And you are gravitating to people that tell you the truth. And that see things you don't. To enlighten you so you can grow and see them too. And you can make preparations for your life and avoid a lot of pitfalls if you choose to listen. Because I don't teach you to follow me. I teach you to look within and learn. To follow yourself. And listen to yourself. I've never been someone that wants to be worshipped. I want you to know who you are as well as to know who I am. Because the ones of you that know who I am, and there are, there are still things about me I don't know. But the ones of you that listen can see and hear and feel well enough to listen and then you do what I ask you to do. You go behind my back and you test my footwork. You test my gangster. Huh? You see if I'm lying or telling the truth. You all will wait on these things and you will research these things. And then you come back and tell me drip yes or drip no. Fortunately, it's usually drip yes. <laughs> Instead of drip no. <laughs> Thank you very much for that because... You have made me not listen to the naysayers, the people that put me down and threaten me and laugh at me and make fun of me and say that I don't know what I'm talking about. And then when these things are confirmed and you all go get the information, then they never want to apologize to me. Hmm. They like to hurt my feelings and laugh about it. But then when you all confirm it for me, they always get quiet. You can hear a rat piss on cotton. So you have to learn. And I try to set the example for you by out of all the bad things that have happened to me. I still will stand and not run in the face of adversity. You never let people tell lies on you and try to destroy your character and run away and tuck your tail and hide like a coward, especially when you know it's lies. No, you stand. That's what a real leader does. And I'm not saying everybody's supposed to be a leader. Everybody's not made to be a leader. That's fine. Some people are made to stand on the sidelines and cheer and support you, support you and have your back and donate and do and share your videos, do anything they can to support you. That's not what they don't want to be in the place I'm in. And you know what? I don't blame you because it's a hot seat. And it gets very uncomfortable and I'm always getting scrutinized, criticized, lied on. Always these rumors about me that they cannot prove. And the things that they can prove, I confront them and I admit, yes, this is true. Yes, I did this. No, I did not do that. And some of these things are that they confront me about are, are legal things. Legal things I have right to do, like change my name. There's really no put me on blast of confrontation about that because 
I'm the first one that told I had a legal, legal, legal name change. I tell everybody I know. I tell people that I met I've had one. I don't mind you knowing who I am. I'm not ashamed of that. I don't regret it. I don't want to go back and change my name back to Tia Wilson. I, I have no desire to do that. That was a false name of, with a false construct and a very abusive mother that would call me that name and tell me to come here so you could beat me or punch me in the face. Hmm. See, it's just like a slave master and a slave owner that falsely tells someone they owns a life or a body that does not belong to them because it was sent through the womb of the mother as a messenger, as a fighter, as a warrior, or as a loser and a victim. Whatever those bodies do and wherever your body lands, you're going to leave here no matter if you're a great person or if you're the lowest piece of filth that on the bottom of the earth. You will leave here the same way. Unfortunately, we will all have the same result. But no human being, unless they cloned you, gave you that body, but they will say they did and chain them, and then they will give them a name, which reduces the power of the person, reduces the awareness of the person, reduces the knowledge and the ability to receive and to know and to access in the cell memory why you came here who you are the who what when where and why what you do and how much time you got to do it when somebody gives you a name and they beat you and degrade you they are giving you that name to suppress your power and to enslave you to them and make you feel like you're nothing so you're whining you're crying you're moaning your suffering gives them energy when a mother beats her own child, humiliates and degrades the child and watch the child suffer in pain because they love the mother and they are heartbroken by the mother's lack of love and affection for them to the point that the only time she touches them, the only time she speaks to them, the only time she gets close to them is to inflict pain upon the body and the mind of the person, the child, thus piercing the veil of innocence, piercing the comfort of the child, the peace of the child to access deep pain within the soul so that the energy will leak out of the soul of the child and then you will feast on the child and you will become more powerful in your ego and your narcissism and your illusion. You get power from the child, not through love, not through exaltation of the soul of the being that you created to do good things upon the world. You get it through inflicting pain, humiliation, degradation, making the child feel small and insignificant. And if they have no power and no value to be here in your world, other than to be your slave, you will not name me. I will not claim that I changed my name and I changed my motherfucking game and created my game. Alexis K. Tyler, vagina power. And this motherfucker. Huh? That's what it is. And that's what it's going to be. I claimed my soul. I named my soul. And I created my own game and my own rule books to play by. And that's what it is. So the insults don't mean shit to me because I put the truth out about who I am and what it will and what it will not be. Girl, you know, I don't already talked about them dirty ass baby daddies now. Who was just like my mother and believed everything my mother said about me and turned on me and my child and left us with nothing. I see that was Tia. That's a beautiful name. It means aunt, aunt, auntie, Spanish, Tia and Tito. But I will not be the auntie to drama, mess, confusion, and I will not be the auntie that is the victim. You gave that beautiful name to someone that you want to torture and terrorize and victimize and then suck like a vampire all their energy, their knowledge, their mind, and their soul, and their wisdom that they don't know they have. And since you are the mother, 
You are the mother of conflict. You are the mother of chaos and turmoil, hatred and rage and mental illness. And you will not call me your name and inflict your game upon me. So you see, I said that to say I don't give a fuck about a bitch trying to expose me or talk about me. And, oh, she changed her name. I sure did. I stood in a court of law in front of a judge. I have no regrets. I can stand in that. I won't hide from that tuck tail and run. For what? I didn't do anything illegal. As an adult and finally taking my power back, I stood as an adult and did what was best for me. I don't care who knows it because I tell everybody anyway. I know what I've been through. I know how I took it. I know how I experienced it. I know what choices are best for me. And either you follow me or you don't. You support me or you don't. You donate or you don't. That's fine. My message and I'm just not for you. But to change because you critique me, bitch. And you don't like me and trying to put me on blast about something I did legally. That was honored by the law in the state of Georgia. I'm very happy with my decision. Well, not completely because that's not the name I wanted. I wanted something more towards my culture, but they didn't have it. When um, me and the Jewish people were creating the name based on Gemantria. (laughs) My name was not an accident, dear. It was strategically planned out and it was all based on the number system of Gematria. And you would get a different result if people, if you allow people to call you a certain name and you call yourself a certain name that is based on the numbers that will allow you to ascend into power instead of ascend into weakness and pain and loss being a victim of someone. And that name, my name, does not scream victim. Anyway, enough of that bullshit. Let's get into this reading. Let me tell you some funny things I found. Funny, like not ha-ha funny. Like weird, interesting. I don't want to say them, but I'm going to say them anyway. When I started looking at Dawit Eshkadam's digestive system, as I say, I saw a lot of unresolved conflict. I, For some reason, I saw several women and I saw witchcraft. People have been working witchcraft, black magic against this man, bring, trying to bring about his death and his downfall, his brother and Nipsey. Also, going back to Africa and Ethiopia. See, this is where a lot of shit starts with Dawit. The spirits told me between Dawit being between 15 years old and 18 years old, the government, and, and it was powerful men in government in Ethiopia who knew who he was. And the community, as well as the Ritra, knew who he was. And this powerful man, but looks like a woman as well, in government, when he was between 15 and 18, they say he had to be dead. Hmm. There was a execution team put out on him to murder him between age 15 to 18 years old. And they charged him particularly with war crimes. There was an eternal foul on him for him to be dead god damn it as a teenager and he had to get his ass the fuck out over there you hear me because if they did not they were going to kill him and string his ass up as a testimony in public to show them you do what this motherfucker did right here and you's going to be a dead motherfucker while the sun is shining bright and by nightfall your ass will be laid out and wrapped the fuck up like a shroud of Turin, goddammit, like an Egyptian mom in this motherfucker, because they really had it out for his goddamn ass, because they said that he, they accused him of several things. I just finished looking at this and writing this down. They accused him of war crime. 
they accused him of being a killer and a murderer and getting a group of people together to incite violence upon the goddamn government overthrow. They accused this man of overthrowing the government. Look, I don't know what the fuck I'm saying, okay? This is what I've seen in the spirit. I do not fucking know. I don't know everything about this man's history, and I deliberately didn't look because I don't want to be influenced by anything I see. So I like to look after the fact it, for people to say, Alexis, that you don't know what the fuck you talking about, or wait a minute, I know what you're talking about. See, I so I, I, I could be wrong. I don't care about being wrong, but I don't know. I'm just getting this straight out the dome at the spirit. This is what I'm hearing people over there and Ethiopian government, and, and they, they accuse, I don't know if they lying, goddammit, or someone, but they want to say he was also involved, somebody up in high government from when he was that age got a, he got enemies that done held on to that shit, passed that shit down to their other children and uncles and aunties and shit and government and said, keep this motherfucker right here on your goddamn it list because they accused him of murder and said that he uh, was attacking a group of people and murdering motherfuckers that was tied to the goddamn government uh, because the government secretly had this plan with some Europeans and I don't know why I'm getting a Hitler type vibe a Mussolini type of vibe the Italian want to dominate and enslave Africa, Ethiopia, Eritrea and turn the people against each other and make the make them fight each other because they now Ethiopia is one of the countries they were never slaves like they had Americans and other people African people that they had enslaved they never they weren't going for that shit and went bound down for that goddamn it shit and they weren't gonna be enslaved by each other. Dawit ass, see that's what I'm seeing. He wouldn't finna go for that damn shit and take that damn shit. And his mama is over here. His mama be with him all the time. The mama is down with him and encouraged and supported everything he did. Because if he didn't stand up and fight, they were going to kill him. His mama wipe out everybody, goddammit, over there doing some ethnic cleansing on each other, goddammit. That, that's what, that's what they saying, that what his mama saying, and that he was an enemy. They consider him an enemy enemy of the government because he want to overthrow it and it's also saying he is the man that will be king they were afraid this man would become a president a king i'm getting chills like a dominant leader in government and i'm here in parliament so for some reason europe is coming up over here in england like they had some ties to when this was going on and whites wanted to dominate and overthrow it, and they still got a hand in it right now, along with China and Russia. I just heard Saudi Arabia as well. So they must have investors tied into the government of Ethiopia. And I have said before, if you look at my old readings, it's got uh, Nipsey's name, his father's name on it, tied to Ethiopia and Eritrea. He done created real strong enemies over there because the daddy... Wasn't nothing nice as we sat down south. The daddy wasn't nothing to goddamn it play with, huh? Daddy didn't play that damn shit. It's like get let's get down in it and let's get to it, nigga. What the fuck is it? Before nigga come talk to him or come up on him, the nigga might have his head cut off. See, that's what they accusing that with goddamn it of doing now. I look. Thank you, Andrea Appleton. I don't know why. Well, it might not be new to you, but it's new to me. Because I don't know nothing about their history. And I don't really know all this shit about their goddamn raw-ass daddy, goddamn it. Now, see, that's where them two children get it from. Because he done taught them boys to be the same way in, into politics, law, government, structure of politics, along with the other trainer Nipsey guy and the reading him training himself and being in the gang, but the daddy was right there, right, and being with his brother, Black Sam, who was his his mentor, his biggest fan, his investor, cheerleader and shit, they right there behind the shit, they don't play that goddamn it shit, because Nipsey might look small, but you know his mind kind of throwed off, you push him in the wrong direction, along with the dad and goddamn it, Black Sam, see, Black Sam is what I would call, don't let them goddamn it glasses and that man talking soft. Fool your goddamn it ass, goddamn it. Don't let 
the smooth taste fool you when Black Sam be standing up there with them goddamn glasses on, being polite and clean and well mannered and well dressed, talking now, cause that's a smooth criminal, goddamn it. Really brilliant mind and smart, but don't test it now. <laughs> And you see the daddy act so harmless and quiet and talk soft and shit. And very eloquent, well-spoken, well-dressed, just like his two sons to stand there. But see, I done seen him, the daddy, body to body. God damn it, I done seen he was young, god damn it, busting head. So he know, they're like, this nigga better get up out of here. As a teenager... You better get out of him. Got them over there whooping folks to ass and say he over there damn slanging blood over there, knocking motherfuckers down. Say this nigga is a murderer, goddammit. Now see, look. <laughs> say this nigga raw. I done said that before. This motherfucker is not, don't play that shit now. Now, when he was a teenager, he felt like shit. We we got to do what we gotta do, cause if not, they're gonna wipe us out. So I that's it was survival to him. It wasn't fun and games to him. It was like this is what I gotta do. And the government, not all of them, but his key factions inside of that that were in power that was scared of him. Who we? I don't know what this man looked like or was like as a teenager. They was grown men. He had them shaking, put fear in their heart because he would bite that shit. And then they was like, he going to go, but really we're going to hem him in and kill his ass so he don't goddamn be able to get out of here. Because if he get out of here, this nigga goddamn it double back. As they said out here, not back, bike, double back. It's going to be some problem. So he got out of there. But what I'm also seeing when he got out of there and ran and came to the U.S., they sent agents behind him to watch what he doing. Government assassins and government agents to spy on him and watch what he doing and see if they could pinpoint him and kill him over here because they knew he had affiliations back home and he was going to double back. They did not want that to happen. This is where some of this shit is coming from. They showed me FBI dealing with the rise of a black messiah, which would go back to J.F. Hoover time. Now, I don't know what year he came over here, but that J. Edgar Hoover vibe was in play when he came here. And what people don't know is there are ties with the U.S. and Ethiopia. Because them black folks is really look black on African on the outside, but they in they in they in white they white underneath like a white face, and they pretend they for the people, but they not. And it's bribery and corruption in Ethiopia, and they allow these things to go on and the violations to the people and the rape and the prostitution of the people and the starvation of the people, certain ethnic groups of people. That are also African peoples of color. They'll take them down and violate them. And then attacking and punishing Eritrea. Okay. That is some of this here. With that J. Edgar Hoover energy. And to spy on people. And to stop the rise of a black messiah. Over here as well. When he came here. He came into that energy. Okay. So he. I saw FBI. He's on a watch list. Watch for travel, plane. How many times you get that passport check? Were you going back and forth to the U.S. embassies? And so I wonder, where is the embassy in California? Where is the embassy if there's one in Eritrea or if there's one in Ethiopia? See, that's why I told you, Shanquilla Robinson, the U.S., not Mexico, the U.S. said, they weren't going to pursue it. Ain't nothing there. Her neck went broke. Back went broke. That was all lies and shit. I just don't know why the mother would not handle her own autopsies on her baby like that. Because that baby is a pawn that they're trying to diminish and say is nothing. Because Mexico has multi-million dollar and billion dollar companies inside of the U.S. 
and factories and production plant and other companies tied to banks and laundering money for the cartel. And then the, oh boy, man, you know what? There's certain things I'm not, I can't say. But the U.S. makes a lot of money off, off of Mexico. Mexico, they also have companies from U.S. and Mexico. And they make a lot of money down there. They got an I wash your hand, you wash mine type of policy. So if the mother allows them to treat her daughter like a nigga, a nigga is someone that's a dead person, that term nigga and black, and treat you like that, a nom de guerre, like I have told y'all, and I shared a video about an hour or so ago with someone talking that knows more about this than I do in Moorish Law to confirm what I have said. And this is also tied into Louisiana treaties, Louisiana purchases, which will be where Nipsey's mama and grandmama came from. So if the mother does not step in this war, her child will be a nobody and her file will be thrown in the trash can like her flesh meant nothing, no more than a dead dog, and her life meant nothing. She, your mom like she up there, kind of country and slow, goddammit. Now, but she dealing with these city slicker motherfuckers and being crump and all the people. So, see, maybe she might catch on. She better catch on like her sister's younger, so the sister's a little brighter and know what time it is. She better push Shanquilica mama to get the fuck together. And wake up, because if not, this is all about money and treaties and business between these U.S. officials on a higher level. See, and when you're dealing with that with, you're dealing with several moving parts here. Because those are not the only enemies to him. And people kept trying to say, oh, it's just the government that killed Nipsey. Or maybe some, I've talked to some some Eritreas that believe that. And I'm like, and because of the dead and the pop Nope. Because Nipsey was already heavily grounded in the politics and the dirty ball. You got to kill a 60 to become a 60 type of shit. That's a part of it. The music industry initiations and rituals under Rock Nation. That's another part of it. His baby mama, that's the actress that's had all these evil affiliations, affiliations, excuse me, affiliations, excuse me. She is what they call a stunt bitch. See, one of the handlers and shooters that fire the bullets off when you done, they done targeted a nigga and put you on the nigga to set the nigga up. Then secretly they get the insurance money, they, whatever rights they can get from record deals and artists, movie rights, anybody that they sick her on, huh? because she just one of the ones, they're going to always have them in every generation. What you said, here's the thing with the division between Eritrean Ethiopia, Eritrea is a Christian state, Ethiopia is a unreconciled Jewish state. They had to fight to get the foot off the neck of the Vatican. Really? I don't know about all that. I'm learning. You said the division between Eritrea and Ethiopia, Eritrea, so the, all the Eritreans are Christian. Are you sure all of them are Christian over there? Or just saying it's a Christian state? That's what rules them? That's the uh, honored and public acceptable religion in Eritrea is Christian? Or is it Orthodox Christian? And uh, Ethiopia is unrecognized Jewish. But see, I, I don't think that's the source of their problem, though. When his father was fighting that government, they were trying to kill them. Now, I don't know all the details of it, but I know it was not just about no religious fight. Is, is that what you're saying? Because I see Europeans just like Mussolini. At one point, they tried to dominate Ethiopia. Now, I don't know a lot about it, but I don't. I don't believe that that's when the father was fighting. That's all this was about. But you're saying... That's all this, this war was about when his father had to escape because of war? Just because of Christians and Jews? I don't know. So I'm, I'm willing to be taught by you. Is that what you're saying? Because that's not what's coming to me that is the only reason that his father had to fight to survive. And see, then it also, if you go back to Vatican, then that would also be Italian. 
but Mussolini did have a foothold in there and was trying to dominate that area. I also don't like black people so or, or Af people of African descent and want to take their resources and take their land from them. What you say? Um, so no, you can continue to talk because I'm learning from you as well. I'm just a little bit confused. Are you sure that's the only reason that they were fighting because of religion? Or is that the justification that they used? I'll wait for your response. Anyway, when he comes here and I'm seeing the issues with Nipsey, this is, this is just not retaliation for the sins of his father. Basically, his father's sins are standing up and fighting for what he believed in and fighting to save his family and his people. He, if he would have been murdered, we wouldn't see what we're seeing now with Nipsey and the great achievements and making history and his brother and the great achievements in the history and the father established here and the father still a teacher and still an educa educator. And they still want the father to shut up the same way they have been watching his whole life. They know his whole life and all of his business because they have people inside that are knowing, seeing, and hearing, and affiliations also through the rolling 60s and the entertainment industry. These are a lot of dirty organizations and LAPD who have their federal affiliations with FBI, CIA, and other black ops groups that we don't know about. That is also what I'm seeing tied into this. You said it's a religious war. Or really spiritual inky versus Enlil. Yes, I agree. It's religious, but it's also re religion is sanctioned and controlled by politicians, politics, and secret occult groups that run governments that say give them this religion, give them that religion, and oppress them of the knowledge of who they are and divide and conquer them. It is also what I'm seeing if there's that honored religion because. We know that in many ways, Christianity blinds and oppresses people. But, um, you know, if you're saying that's what it's all about, it's, I, I can't argue. I will listen. I'm waiting for her to respond. It's very interesting what she's saying. I will learn. I'm not upset. I'm willing to learn. But I just want you to give me clarity here because I don't see that this is just religious justifying murdering people just for religion I know also they are afraid of this man politically they are still afraid of Dawit politically and what he represents to a lot of people and I don't know all the people they know and all the context and who listen to him and his influence and work he done I haven't followed like i said i don't like to know uh, everything because it will prejudice me i like to see beyond the veil and i saw this stuff in his body when i was looking at the gut i also see that nipsey's mother for some reason and i'm willing to be wrong about this her and nipsey's father do not get along the mother is his enemy the mother hates his guts. The mother has a lot of resentment towards Nipsey's father because she cannot manipulate and control the father. It's something that's going on between them and they've had this love-hate warring type of dynamic between them for years. But I don't see that it's him I see that it's her. She hates him and she has berated him. She liked to degrade him and put him down and call him names. She looked at him as weak at one point because he was so crazy about her. He was so in love with her. It looked like as they said, I I'll drink your bath water. That's how crazy he was about Nipsey's mother and family, he 
this was his trophy, like he idolized and he worshiped her. And she disrespected him and the love he had for wanting to hold his family together because she felt, well, you don't have this and you don't have this certain amount of money and I don't want you anymore. I don't want this life. I don't want this family. I, Lord, forgive me. I feel bad for saying that and I'm willing to be wrong about that. She laughed at him because it's like, you you love me and you want to be with me and we have these children, but what is love? I want some money. I want some fame. I want some fortune. I want recognition. Why should I waste my life? Lord, forgive me if I'm, if I'm getting this wrong. Waste my life and my beauty and my talent with you when you can't give me what I want. You weak and insufficient and incompetent. I want to be with somebody that can make me a star and give me the limelight and give me the money and the lifestyle that I deserve. Lord have mercy. That's she just like she spit on this man and she still hate this man. Like uh it seemed like his mama's a narcissist like. Hmm. She remind me of my mama, a real bad, fine Creole bitch. You know, like like real fine. No, they fine. No niggas want them, want to fuck all on them and different races of men. So it's like I can get anybody I want. Look at me. And you think I'm going to settle for you? Like really like looking down on that man and made that man snap on that lady. Don't it, baby? Don't it, big boss? Does Nipsey pick the same type of women with his two baby mamas? It's just like that. And I, you know, like I say, I'm willing to be wrong about that shit. Because I don't like to say that shit. You know, I ain't said it. I held it to myself now for, for four years now. I ain't even want to say, say that shit. But the mama hate hate his daddy. And like the daddy, who like him and the grandmama. And grandma would never say nothing. That's her child. The grandma would just secretly pray and keep things to herself because the grandmama not messy. That's her child. She feel like, well, for what my child didn't do, I got to absorb the sins of, of, of my child. And I got to take care of my grandchildren uh, with with his daddy. So so her and the daddy became ace, boom, coon. They became part. We got Brady cheering. We got to hide what Angelique is doing around him, what she's sneaking, doing around him. I don't, I don't, I don't want nobody to... You know, know what my daughter, Lord have mercy, my daughter did. So I got to take up the slack. I love these babies. And Amrius is a goddamn favorite. And then look like the daddy kind of snapped and whooped the ass. Goddamn it. Like, <sighs> Jesus. She provoked the daddy on a runoff and running the street and then talk shit. I ain't got to do this and that. And who are you? And I do what I want. they whoosh up. Went upside her head. You know, his mama got tired of that shit. And another nigga, I think, Samantha daddy might have tapped her ass a few times. See, you know what? I don't want to say this. It's too early in the morning. Try not to get into these things. The mama had a lot of conflict and, and picked the wrong men for the wrong thing. Money. Not DeWitt. That was a good man. And he has a lot of regrets about his family. I don't know if he married, got another family, other children, but he really wanted that one. And the mama didn't want to act right and like could dismiss him and dismiss the children. And she still hates him to this day. Like uh, they have talked before and it's always she gets nasty with this man because she didn't want to recognize this man's strength and intellect and power and determination. And um, she still feel like uh like maybe she can manipulate him and get what she want out of him. And then the man don't want to play ball. They up there fighting like damn alley cats. God damn it. I mean, not fist fighting like not now, but like a uh, mental, like, cause she want to just mentally dominate. And when she can't dominate, want to degrade this man and humiliate. And he don't care at this point. It's just like, you know what it is, what it is. And 
I really wanted this to work out and be something that is never going to be and that it's not. And he's not going to go back now. It's like she wants something from the daddy. And when the daddy don't want to, you know, play ball or do what she want him to look big, big boss knee, man. Look, I'm sorry, man. I ain't going to, man, look, I ain't want to come over here with this bullshit, man. Yeah, he was a high value man, uh, teach, teach your niece. You see, that's a, that's a, that's sad man to hold up his kids to high value and treat a woman with so much love. She didn't want him. And she felt like she could do better. And this man wasn't weak at all. He's very powerful, very successful now. And now she, she could get into that energy. I'm sure she has money of her own now, but she could get into that energy with him. And and move other women out the way because it looked like a woman he got with after her she really didn't like that lady, and it was a lot of jealousy around it. The conflict looked like the mama made a bed and don't want to lie in it because the man wouldn't come back to her. And if he do, she gonna steal his money. You know what, Lord forgive me for saying that because that's all he would be to her. Just what the mama. I don't know. I'm wondering one time his mama a kleptomaniac, goddammit. Like, you know, oh, goddamn. Oh, Jesus. This is all in this man's intestine. This is in this man's intestine. I, I just, I don't know why that just came to me that that man was saying that shit about that lady. That that lady had some sticky hands at one point. Like, uh, oh, Jesus. Like a drug problem. Um, um, I am so sorry to say that. But that's what. They just showed me with the mama. The mama was off the chain, man. It wasn't the daddy that was off the chain. It was the mama that was off the chain. But you know what? That hurt is still in that man, though. That regret is in there. And she still is holding things against thy wit. And had some things against his mama. Like, you turned my children against me. You said stuff about me to my children. And it really wasn't that. The children wasn't stupid. You know, him and his brother, they could see the difference between the mama and the... Oh, my. It was so much argument and conflicts with her and men's. And sometimes, like, they seen or heard her get in fights and arguments with the men's because, see, the mama... See, Nipsey, in a lot of ways, is like his mama, see. His little girl is like his mama because... uh. The mama, I don't know, she, like she pulled a falk or drawed a falk on a nigga like they was at home, man, at the table and it was cooking. I don't know if they had ate and she was picking up silverware. I don't know if she drawed a falk on a nigga or a knife, a butter knife. Look, I don't know what she drawed on a nigga, but the nigga was getting on the mama. Oh, man. Like the mama was sniffing. Like her nose was running, sniffing. Bitch, what you sniffing? Bitch, you on that shit. Now, bitch, fuck, I ain't on that goddamn shit. I'm tired of you. I'm going to do what the fuck. I'm tired of you accusing me of shit. But you been all out. You been out all night. Where the fuck you been and what you been doing? Your clothes look disheveled on you. You been fucking some niggas and out getting high with niggas with money. Shit, I know you, bitch. I'll do this to you. I'll do that to you. Well, come on then. It's like, you know what? I don't know where the fuck I'm getting this shit at this early in the morning. Like, the mama is a real, excuse me. Now, she's still a beautiful woman, so you know she was bad then, bad than a motherfucker then. But, like, the mama, like, in her mind, like, this was, like, the way she gets, it's a alley cat. Like, some, like she be real pretty and cool and shit and be dressed up like, mm-hmm, uh, how you doing, you know. And when she come in the room, she turn her head, oh, that bitch cunt. Who is that? That bitch can't touch me. I'm this, I'm that. It's all about me, goddamn it. Everybody, all eyes on me, the men's all piles, whatever. So it's like no bitch didn't matter to her. When she get in the room, she focused on what the fuck she focused on. So you really, nobody couldn't really tell the mama a goddamn thing. So let me tell you, oh, we're not going to talk about that and turn her head. Oh, you still here? Because I, I mean, I didn't know you were here because you know this, this. All I see is ass poof. Be gone like the mama was something, man. 
Yeah, the mama ain't to be fucked with. I let a bitch know. I let a nigga know. I don't care if you my nigga and you here in the house. I still go out do what the fuck I wish up. Then get another bust upside the head. Got them because of mama mile. And the attitude, like who the fuck is you? It's like, bitch, I'm here. I give you money. I do this and that. You going to do what I say? No, the fuck I'm not, bitch. I'm going to do what I say, God damn it. Then you know. You in my world trying to get a nut. Then wish up get knocked in. Then pulling the gun, pull a fault. And I, look. I don't know where I'm seeing them. I'm going to pull silverware on people. Use silverware as a weapon. But it's like, look, whatever I got to get, goddamn it, to get you off of me. And the mama knows she was wrong. No, she was wrong as two left shoes. Going to go with somebody and say you my boyfriend. Then either go out publicly or slip out, sneak out. Nigga don't want her to go She's with other meat. You know what? I'm asking for forgiveness right now before this shit get out because I don't want to say that about that man, mama. And um, I am so willing to be wrong by that man, mama. But it made Nipsey very unhappy. It made his brother very unhappy. It made made the father unhappy because it was so he felt like he lost his family. That meant he lost. He really blamed himself for this and he, nobody could control the mama. The mama going to control herself. Even if she wrong, it's fine. Well, I'm willing to deal with it later on. But we we in the now, God damn it. And this, this is my time. But look at me. This is my time. So I'm going to get what I'm supposed to have that I didn't get. And she did not worry about anybody's feelings but her own. She didn't care. That is still in diwit. And it's affecting the function of his intestine. And it's all down in the small intestine. But then Nipsey wanted me to tell him the cardiovascular system and the blood is dirty. His whole body needs to be detoxed. Like he needs to get some colonics done. And his whole body, blood, herbs for blood, the liver stood out. The gallbladder, spleen, and pancreas, which are like all blood, whole, the organs hold blood and need to be filtered. Then he showed, Nipsey showed me a poison, like a metal, metallic toxin in the lower left gut, like down by the hip bone and the lower left, the lower right gut, down by the hip bone, up in the colon that goes across the chest under the rib cage diaphragm which would be the transverse colon he and then the spine and his backbone and dealing with the central nervous system spots in the brain spots and the central nervous system where the nerves are in the backbone moving out of the body the nerves are moving out of the backbone around the body different parts of the body and down into the feet and the legs and the circulation I'm also telling that this is really weird to me. I see a a basketball player that's African tied to David Gross and the marathon. These are also secret enemies and Africans tied into some of Nipsey's business deals and basketball deals and his basketball player. I forgot his name, but he got a he African and he got an African name. I'm wondering this ties to investors in the marathon and what's it got to do with them now? Are there secret parties? Is this in a trust as well as secret investors that also are closet enemies that are part of a big corporation that want to annihilate them? Also, it showed me developers, big time corporate real estate developers that's looking at that land that the marathon and that building is on the areas in Crenshaw there are secret organizations that these developers in California and that's tied to the old governor uh, with the mayor Garcetti the Garcettification of California and under the Trump administration where Laws were passed to make those empowerment zones. Damn, y'all, I got to go because this finna take me off. I'm going to be right back.